Hi guys, forgive me for looking so tired. Um, it's actually been a very busy week. Uh, I was on, I worked Saturday and Sunday. This, which should be the, that just went, and then this week pretty much has been studying and working in the afternoons. And we had an exam today, and we have an exam Monday, Wednesday, and Friday next week. So, yeah, it's been been an interesting, interesting <laughs> experience. Today's exam, I wasn't really too certain what the format was going to be. For some reason, it was reviewed kind of late. But I don't think it was. It went as badly as I think. Although, alright, so let me tell you what it was. Our exam was supposed to be a periodontology examination. We were, for this whole semester, all we've been doing is periodontology, amalgam, which is operative dentistry, and evidence-based medicine. Now, for those who know that most most of dentistry is periodontology. You have to know how to manage gum disease, you know, how to recognize gum disease because you know it's one of the most devastating things that can actually happen to the to the to the a patient. So we've been taught about the ADA classification, you know, the class one, two, three, four, five, class one being gingivitis, class two being, you know, mild, three being moderate, four being severe and, and five being refractory. You know, we've been we've been going through all of the, that. We've been going through the pocket depths, attachment loss. We've also been going through types of surgeries that they do, whether the um, you know apically displaced, modified Widman, undisplaced. Uh, we've been learning how to actually increase the attached gingiva, which you know you, you get with apically displaced. We've been learning that modified displaced, a modified or uh, Widman um, flap, you know, is not for. Any other, any other process except trying to scale and replane the roots of teeth that are you know inaccessible by normal hand scaling and replaning we've been learning what is the process of scaling and replaning we've been learning non-surgical manage of management of periodontal, periodontal treatment we've been learning how to deal with systemic diseases um, as they affect the, um, the periodontium uh, management of abscesses endo endoperiodontal lesions you know Retrograde lesions, orthograde lesions, you know, retrograde lesions will be ones that go from apical, but from the pulp, and then they move from the apex of the tooth towards the, you know, the, 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 the cervical region of the tooth, of the tooth. so it's moving from down upward as retrograde, and orthograde will be from the, you know, the sulcus downwards, you know. It's been a lot of knowledge that has been, there has been a lot of knowledge that's been disseminated to us, so, yeah, I mean... Down to even hand scaling, some of the stuff that we've been learning, I mean, I mean, it's blowing my mind. Down to the scaling, what scalers to use, you know, there's um, one, two, three, four anterior, five, six anterior and premolars, seven, eight, nine, ten, which should be posterior buccal and lingual, eleven, twelve, which should be mesial and, and out of the posterior teeth, and thirteen, fourteen, which should be the distal of the posterior teeth. Then there's fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen, eighteen, which are actually blends of, of 11, 12, and 13, 14 to aim to help to make the, the actual instrument more accommodating to the mesial and distal edges of the tooth. So it makes it more accessible to the tooth. Um, so you can do better jobs at scaling. We've been learning about the many types of, of scalers which allow you to get deeper into pockets because you know sometimes the length of the actual blade or the, or the, or the work inside of the tool is not you know small enough to get them into very you know the width narrow width um, pocket so that's just been it's been a, a busy semester we've been practicing and man <laughs> so and oh and to top it all off so the reason one of the reasons that I noticed that that USMLD was going to come into uh, or come in handy when I was pursuing dentistry was for periodontology the amount of basic sciences that you have to to know simple like they ask a lot of things like for instance give me a perfect example for localized aggressive periodontitis or previously called juvenile periodontitis they'll tell you agritobacter actinomycetum com committens or whatever it was just otherwise called aa and that is one of the most um that's the, one of the bacteria that have bacterium or that has been identified as the causative agent of localized aggressive periodontitis. Now, you have to know, you know, where does it, what what group or classes it belong to? How does it? Why is it so virulent? You know, things like that. There that I realized that an exam like like um, USMLE would ask. 
I haven't really explored NDDE, but I mean, who knows? Maybe that's. It seems as though that it's the basic sciences that are that is required for that examination is quite extensive as well too. So, someone told me to try to do NDDE, uh, sorry, MBDE, National Board Dental Examination. I love the feedback that I've been getting, so I've actually decided to to just extend the study period over a longer period so that I, I don't burn myself up because I've actually been feeling really tired. I've been dealing with a lot of things with school and uh, just been burnt out, put it that way, and work. And I'm still struggling with my dental office, and I'm still working in a, in a general practice in, in Port. Well, if you know where Jim, in Jamaica is, you know Portmore is maybe like thirty minutes from Kingston, which is where I'm located. So. That has been just tiring me out, and quite frankly, I'm I'm poof. <laughs> so, yeah, periodontology has been has been what has well is what has been you know consuming my life pretty much for the last semester. That I'm worrying about, you know, will I be able to pay this bill? And will I be able to pay this pay that bill? One thing for the books, I must say, this semester, this month, well, last month was the first month that I actually. Because of the bank, I had, I was able to survive for three days on one dollar, well, no, three dollars US. So I just basically used the money for bus fare to get to school and get back. So that's a confession. <laughs> I, I skipped lunch and I just literally, uh, someone asked me if we're going to lunch and I just went to lunch, but I didn't, I didn't buy any food or anything. So because in my mind, it's just like, that's a small sacrifice for what I'm trying to achieve. And the more I do this, the more I'm realizing, you know, I'm still, I'm still progressing. I had a few exams, well, in, an exam last week, which I didn't really like too much. It was a carving for a maxillary first molar. Um, I like, I, 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 I seem to have misunderstood what they were looking for because I mean, I, I know the anatomy. We, we all did uh, restorative dentistry, so you have to know the anatomy. And most of us, have, if not all of us, have passed so far. So I mean, it's just. I'm not understanding what they want us to, to translate into what we put on, you know, we'd be carved into the wax. So that has been interesting. So periodontology. Evidence-based medicine was taught by an, a Harvard graduate or, or a master's in, who has a master's in public health. Uh, it's not a, the most interesting topic, but we have an exam, so we have to study. And... Uh, what I liked about operative dentistry, which is mostly hands-on, I really like that. I like just having the hands-on experience. Uh, operative dentistry deals with rest restoring, using, re 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 using amalgam, even though we know that most times now they don't do restorations with amalgam, do restorations with composite. But amalgam is where we started you know, and we're now building up. So we're learning class one, class two, class five preps. You know, those are the, the, the basic preps. And I did a, a video before on those preps. Um, yeah, so that's basically how my, how my semester has gone. And, and it's about to end in September, which will be next month, once we've passed all of our examinations. Hopefully, all 10 of us go into year four. And it has run, the time has run so quickly. I mean, just think, I started this, this channel last year. Yeah last, yeah, last year, 2017. And that was when I was in England studying for the MRCS examination. It started dentistry in June. And we're already in August of 2018. And the year is almost completed. So just, just bear that in mind and just show you how quickly things are going on. I mean, shouts out to, like I said, shouts out to all those who were, were giving me advice. And I really, I really appreciate it because... Believe it or not, I don't have a lot of people outside of my mom and my brother and sister. And my, my I have a very close set of, um, a close circle who advise me on, you know, maybe you should do this, maybe you should do that. But they don't know about dentistry per se. Like my sister's a lawyer and brother's in finance. You know, my friends are teachers and lawyers. So they don't really know about medicine and dentistry as a lot of my viewers would. So I really appreciate the advice and keep it coming because this the same way how you help me i can help you and vice versa and that's how we all get to our, our ultimate goal so i belong to as many 
groups on Facebook to do with oral and maxillofacial surgery and oral and maxillofacial surgical residencies as possible. And the reason for that is I just, I just sit back and read what persons, um, you know, put out. So 